Okay, warning, if you don't like hearing about gear getting destroyed senselessly, this is not for you. But if you do love funny conversations with great people, I think you'll enjoy this video that we did with Chris and Jordan from DP Review TV. And it's just a casual conversation, so it's not that organized. Oh, just enjoy it. You're gonna, you're gonna like it. Okay. I was recently talking to Jordan about all of the camera gear that we have broken over the years and it's tragic and kind of hilarious. And so we decided to get together and go over all of our tragic mistakes we've made. I Ladies and gentlemen, Chris and Jordan from DP Review TV. Hi, good to be back. It's great to see you guys again after so long so that we can discuss the emotional trauma uh, of losing and breaking camera gear. We chose this life. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we did. We just get together to talk about our failures after all of this time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, I know, I feel like, who do you think is going to win? Who do you think has done more damage to camera gear over the years? Well, how long have you guys been, so are we just talking YouTube time frame or are we talking professional careers here? I think any time you had a camera and you broke it. So go yeah. back to okay, the beginning perfect. of cameras. I never broke anything before YouTube. <laughs> there was no reason to, right? I mean, I was a responsible photographer. E everything that... was precious before <laughs> YouTube. You know, yeah. But uh, yeah, we could do, I mean, you know, Jordan is very clumsy. You know that. I know that. We all know that. Now everyone knows um, that. Everybody knows that, you know. But uh, he's surprisingly uh, adroit at saving camera gear. But a few have snuck through. I eh? think between the two of us, Chris will come in ahead. But I'm very curious what you guys have done. <laughs> Okay, I'll start. First story was our YouTube channel was just a fledging... Okay, take two. No, there's no takes. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not doing takes. It was fledging. It's a new word, fledging. <laughs> our fledgling YouTube channel had finally gotten recognized by Tamron. They were the first people ever to loan us anything and it was the brand new 24-70 F2.8. And I was like, so excited to try it out. We're, we're using it to film. And we put it on a tripod and somebody bumps into it. Tripod fall right onto the lens and it explodes. It busted open like a can of biscuits. Wow. <laughs> you know when you press How do you the guys thing have a... on the biscuit and it's just like <laughs> springs and little pieces of metal and screws go flying. It, it literally broke right in half. <laughs> It's funny, I think 2470s, in my personal experience, that's yeah. the thing that gets broken. You I have mean, a 2470. My first, so the first thing that I broke, we started our YouTube channel as well, and one of our first videos out in the field, the thing about working for the camera store is, you know, we had a lot of gear that we could take out, none of it belonged to us, and it was all paid for by an actual retail establishment, and uh, yet we, we had no fear. So... Uh, I t we, we took out a t we yeah we I think it was a filter video we did basic filter that was usage. the first one yeah we did outside of the store yeah yeah and and I took a Canon twenty four to seventy two eight because I'm not going to do the first YouTube video with an affordable you know no. lightweight lens that's easily replaced and uh, not a big deal but ironically talking about filters I put the front of that down on a tripod fell over the front of the lens hit a rock and it just dinged the filter and bent in the filter rings. And I believe that was one that we kind of just slipped back into the showcase and oh, no. kind of just <laughs> let it disappear. You know, now, now the fascinating thing is like, a 2470 like... sticks around for a long time. So I think that was like the floor demo 2470. It was for beat up already. Like, like five years, probably just like this. Yeah, our customer did it. This yeah. part, the, the Canon 2470 doesn't accept filters. We don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Chris, we, we're having a hard time getting a filter on this 24 to 70. Oh, Try harder. Oh, are you? Oh, let me fix that for you. Oh, you know. Yeah, it was, it was, are they watching? Is camera store still going to watch this? No, video? they don't watch. No, oh, one, has, no, no one, one watches our yeah. channel anymore. This is your secret. Okay. Are safe. <laughs> okay. So you can have bent filters. It's more of a confessional. <laughs> I had this cat, Sam, and he was an asshole. And I would, I kept my camera gear on like the table and I had yeah. all my lenses out one day. This is long before YouTube. And he jumped up on the counter and with his little white paw, just tap, 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 proceeded to knock every single lens off the table, smashing them all into the ground. I just forgot this until Chris reminded me. I, I mean, you're blaming Sam, but it's clearly your negligence. Yes, and that was the, when I stopped using filters because he managed to fuse one of the filters into the front element of the lens so I could no longer like remove it. 
Oh. Oh my gosh, we just got an origin story. <laughs> yeah, that's why I hate filters. <laughs> <laughs> this is his villain story. I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of filters. I have a story about that. I wish I'd put one on, actually, Tony. Because I never use them either, nor do I use lens caps or anything, right? Or anything reasonable. But uh, It's yeah. still a point of contention. Yeah, 24 to 70s, while we're on the topic. We did a shootout of 24 to 70s. We took a whole bunch. I mean, obviously terrifying. I can't believe the camera store actually let us do it. But we had Pentax 24 to 70s and Canons and Nikons and... Uh, we were in Crow's Nest Pass, which is like a mountain village nearby. Really beautiful. We uh, we met um, this blacksmith. He was doing really cool work with steel cutting, but there was like plasma cutters and there was grinders and you know he was he was welding things. And uh, I didn't have UV filter on the front of the Pentax. Well, it's a test. You can't put a UV filter on. No, that, that would hurt. invalidate your shark. entire test. What's the point then? Yeah. That's exactly. yeah. That's a good explanation for why I didn't use one. We were being and, responsible. Uh, that, that makes more sense. And yeah, hot sparks on the front. And I specifically remember thinking, okay, yes, there's there's molten metal getting slammed by a hammer into the front of this lens, but it's a Pentax. Our Pentax sales <laughs> rep used to put cigarettes out on the front element what? as a as a demo. Wow. Yeah, you know, That's like cool. look at our coatings, they're invincible. Was so this I blame like the 80s? him. <laughs> How long have you guys been doing this? <laughs> yeah, no, well, Just lining well, up a cigarette. He, he he was an old school rep, but yeah, he was yeah he would like back in the day he'd put uh, yep. cigarettes out. So I'm like. If it can take a lit cigarette, it can take molten sharp steel. And In hindsight, that was that was not a good comparison. You find out he all along he just had candy cigarettes. It was sleight of hand. He played you. That it, might it, have it was been. like the yeah the little magician the movie ones. Yeah, yeah. I think it was just sleight of hand. I think he had one Pentax lens and the whole front element was just destroyed, <laughs> and he had sleight of hand. Right? I mean, yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Anyways, that 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 was bad. That took chips out of the front glass. It was not a good. Yeah, it was not a good day. But you know, that's a good one. So, would you like what happened to that lens? Uh, it got shipped back and recut. But I think they had to replace the entire front element. Yeah, they had to replace one. the front element. I Which mean, is base, the most expensive element. Yeah, cost of doing business, Chelsea. It's well, like two hundred bucks usually, right? Because I've I've smashed up a couple of front elements. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that yeah. bad. I mean, that's the great thing about working for the camera store at the time is we didn't have to worry about the bill or how much it was. We just got nasty looks, uh, you know, and that was basically the cost was just. And they still bring it up every time we go into the store. Yeah, guilt Gen trips there and nasty There will generally be one of the these will yeah. be brought up. Yeah. But, you know, I mean. We don't have to pay in money for the broken gear, just in like the emotional abuse, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there was lots. Except yeah. for at us, it's been money a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's been money for us, too. <laughs> it's been embarrassment for me. We were at a Sony event once, and you know how they loan you the gear? You walk around, you take pictures of all the stations. There's always someone blowing balloons or whatever, bubbles. And there was sensor dust, so I took off the lens and went to blow on it and just spit on the sensor. <laughs> and the, it, that one's more humiliating because when you can't control your own saliva, but also you think it's a good idea to blow on the sensor at an event, we couldn't get another camera. The sensor just had my spit all over it. So our video had to include it. Yeah, it we had like, to explain it. See this huge glob on every shot? Dumb Chelsea spit on the sensor. Reputable photography educator. <laughs> <laughs> Spits on the I sensor. still do it all the time, though. I don't, no. Oh, yeah? I blow sensor dust off all uh, the time. Yeah, I've definitely blown on I mean, I mean, come on. What are you going to do? Like, that's the thing people don't get. They're going to definitely lecture us in the comments like, oh, no, real photographers never do that. But you're out in the field. You have a deadline. Like, you just have to figure out something. You bring one of those you do something. bold things like I've never done. Yeah, we never have done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's no. a responsible no. thing. You'll, you'll learn a valuable lesson about the mist that comes out of can air before yeah. it starts putting air out. That's an important one oh, to learn, too, man. with sensors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've learned all of the hard lessons so other people don't have to. That's how we should frame it. Exactly. Everybody out there right now is spitting on their camera sensors. We know it. We all do it. Everybody's doing it. Totally. Yeah, everybody's doing it. It's a watermark, a literal watermark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's really tough to duplicate. Like, we know how much work it is to clone it out. So someone trying to steal your image, that's oh, the yeah. best watermark of all. It's right? avant-garde You can't crop that out. Yeah, no, no. Genius. This is very innovative. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're my PR team. We really turned that one around. <laughs>
We're just trying to make you feel better because we are trying to make ourselves feel better about it too because it happens all the time. I don't I don't even know how much DNA is in sample cameras across the world. It's quite strange actually. Makes you think when you like get a testing camera that another YouTuber's used. Right. And it's like, hmm, That's which YouTuber could I clone? Yeah, hmm. <laughs> they've cloned you. That's why they say don't touch the sensor. You don't know what YouTuber germs yeah. you're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're easily tracked. <laughs> okay, what Jordan, have you broken, it's Jordan? Time for um, a Jordan story. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to continue the standard zoom range trauma because uh, that seems to be one that we're all very well yeah. versed in. Uh, we were in uh, Tokyo for the launch of the GFX 100 uh, Fuji Films medium format camera. And you guys have seen me at a lot of press events. I walk with a monopod over my <laughs> shoulder with the camera dangling off the back. That's the only way that I feel comfortable. Well, um, but I can't forgot the... stuff because he's got a martini in his hand. Right. Yeah, ideally, yeah. or at and least a cigarette I should. in the other hand. In case someone to offers... put out on lenses as demonstrations of the coatings. <laughs> Just in case someone offers you a martini, you want to have both hands free. Although so. we were in Japan, so I think you maybe could still smoke pretty much wherever you want. I don't know how it works, but, but, uh, but uh, we're at the top of the Tokyo Tree. It's uh, the Tokyo Sky Tower. Sky Tower, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, one of the tallest buildings there. Uh, and I'm doing the usual walk around with the monopod over my shoulder. But I forgot this is a medium format camera with a standard zoom. It's so heavy, it actually sheared the Three eight thread off my monopod, and the head and the entire camera just fell like yeah. straight down onto the ground there. Um, yeah, in front of like the reps and stuff. Who, of course, all the Fuji executives were right. absolutely delightful and calm and like, don't worry about mm. it, no big deal. But I'm sure, like deep inside, they're just like, why? What? Why did we? Whoever bring invited it? us got fired <laughs> that day. It was terrible. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. pretty, and that's an expensive piece of kit. Yeah, like the camera was okay, but and I I could mount the lens, and I'm like, I think we're gonna be okay here. And it had it looked like a tilt shift, like one of the elements got oh, shifted God. sideways yeah. in it. So uh, it one was, side was sharp, and it was a very cool look. It was not. An, that's <laughs> oh, not an yeah. easy fix. That's, I could have sold it to Lens Baby. <laughs> I think they just chucked it in the canal right next to the tower at, at the end of that because, like, well, we're not going to fix this. It's no, done this is for. Done, yeah. In 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 gravity's defense. <laughs> I specifically remember... You always take gravity's side. I always take gravity's side. No, this is good for you. In gravity's defense, um, the 3.8 thread on Jordan... So Jordan's monopod had a quarter-inch thread, and I specifically remember we put on an adapter, and it was like a dollar fifty little aluminum adapter. So lesson learned... I was happy to ignore that part of the story. Yeah, lesson learned. Yeah, maybe you're trying to cover... I, you want to get those brass bushings. You brass, that's, the, that's the ticket. Yeah. $8 brass bushing to go quarter inch to three eighths. Do it. It's definitely worth it. Yeah. Yeah. It was a bad, bad choice. If you're going to sling a medium format camera over your shoulder like a sword. Yeah. <laughs> what was the moment like when it dropped? Was it like at a restaurant when they drop all the dishes and everyone claps sarcastically? All the people up at the top of the tower, of course, immediately look and gasp. Because right? when I you mean, hear a loud bang at the top of a tower. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hundreds of tourists. Yeah, and 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 visitors, and like four executives, and uh, yeah, yeah. It makes no, it funny you were not that they're alone Japanese because if they were American, I would think they'd clap and laugh and toast. But the Japanese, yes, must have been like, oh but they were God. very sensitive of my feelings. Oh yes, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then it was just silence. It was just like. <gasps> And silence, and it's just oh, is I don't know what was I don't know what's better. I almost want someone to just cheer and kind of break up the the tension, but totally, yeah, it, uh, it's all it's over now. <laughs> is it? It's in the past. What do you see when you close your eyes at night, Jordan? This, hello, <laughs> that's my night terror. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every I just like leap up in bed and I was like, is it the monopod again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the GFX monopod again. I mean, since then they've given us lots of GFXs to play with and lenses, of course, right? We haven't, we haven't broken any of those since. Yeah, I learned a lesson. Yeah, I feel like they're generally forgiving of us breaking gear. I haven't had anyone cut me off for that specifically yet. <laughs> no, they've cut for many <laughs> other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> The only reason you haven't been cut off from something. <laughs> the only reason we haven't been cut off, exactly. Okay, I'll tell the story I'm, that hurt me emotionally the most. Oh, no. We have never borrowed anything from Pentax. Not for lack of trying. It's just, I don't know, maybe their PR department isn't totally on the ball. We really wanted to review the original K1. You know, it was like full frame and 36 megapixels, and it seemed really cool. So a viewer said, hey... I pre-ordered it, I'm getting it day one, 
why don't I send you my brand new camera that he had just saved up oh, for, no. for us to review. And so I brought that camera and the lens and we also happen to have a brand new tripod that we're reviewing and it's this three-legged thing travel tripod. So I put it on the three-legged thing tripod and we're out in the desert in California doing landscape stuff and uh, I set up my tripod and I'm taking a shot and uh, one of the legs in the tripod just gives out and the whole thing just tumbles and it waxes and leaves this brand new, this dent in this brand new camera. And because it was not from a company, because it was in an individual, I just felt so terrible. That one, I'll never feel okay about I know, that and you just, it just, I still hear that sound echoing in my ears. Also, you broke, you broke a camera that's basically considered unbreakable, Tony. You're the only one. I mean, we, we took that camera and I think we put, we've put Pentaxes under waterfall. We fully submerged it, yeah. We've submerged them in the, in the water. I mean, yeah. It didn't no, it rain. It, it continued to function. It just had a nice ding. <laughs> it just had a ding. <laughs> yeah. Also you could have when, still been stubbing cigarettes out on it. Yeah, the time. Time. still today it can be used as an ashtray. Also, in <laughs> fairness, that particular tripod, they fix the legs so that they lock now. Ah. Oh, good. So I feel like I need to put that out there. That one hurt the most. Can you imagine someone trusts you with their brand new camera and they trusted you of all people? I, I've not borrowed <laughs> gear from a viewer since. I just won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it was too hurt. It hurt me too much. Yeah, people offer to send us stuff and I'm like, you don't know what you're offering. No. <laughs> you can't trust me. Probably well, they'll should. stop after this video goes out. So that's, good. <laughs> that's good, actually. I won't have to yeah. review people's kind offers anymore. Um, we had a really devastating one, actually. We went to Montana and we were hiking, and we had the Canon 5D Mark II and the 5D Mark III, and we got stuck in the rain. So we put them away. Like, these were our best cameras. We put them in our backpacks and we hiked down the mountain, and when we got down to the bottom, they were just completely bricked. They were just flooded with water and they would not work. Two cameras on a trip. The trip was not done yet. Yeah, and though, like, we owned those. Those weren't borrowed. That was like four or $5,000 in camera gear. It hurt me so bad. That was a really, oh. I think that's my big one. And really, other yeah. than spitting on people's cameras and that, guys, I don't think I've really broke anything else. No, you've been pretty good. You witness a lot of it. I've seen a lot. That was in the bag that they got soaking wet? Yes, in my backpack. Yeah, we use waterproof backpacks now, so that's a good lesson. <laughs> Always in hindsight. Plastic bags, yeah. I, I have to learn everything the hard way. It's tragic. <laughs> it's why my life has turned out a little weird. <laughs> oh man, I don't think we've. You know, I, yeah, we've we've been pretty lucky with rain and weather. You, you know, can't a lot think of, of situations any where water ruined the camera for you. There, there's no water stories nothing that you can, you can possibly come up with. <laughs> well, that might be related to that. Maybe. You know, not from rain and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. Do we tell it? <laughs> Let's tell the tale. It needs to be told. Yeah, we may have flooded a camera. Uh, you know, I, like I say, we, we've done terrible things. See, this is a problem with, with having the YouTube show. Um, we've done things, like I said, putting Pentaxes under, under waterfalls and dunking them in the water and Olympus you know, in the shower, Olympus yep. in the shower. You start to get confident, right? You're like, ah, you know, cameras are tougher than we think. And, oh, they're saying they're weather what, sealed. What they can be tougher it. than a flagship camera? Yeah. I mean, maybe we don't mention the brand. Maybe there was just this really nice flag. Oh, they'll find out. Um, yeah, but a really nice flagship camera, battery grip, you know, serious top of the line thing. Over $6, we thought it'd be $6, fun. Sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You know, and we thought this will take it. No problem. We're not going to immerse it. We're simply going to splash it with dirty water on the outside of it. But it's, you know, it's above the the, the, the puddle. It's just going to be a brief splash. The water is going to drip all off. No problems. Well, we just got a new slow motion camera. So I was also just angling for it for that reason specifically. Yeah. Not thinking of the consequences, but it's going to have squishy oh, splash at 240 frames. Dude, the shot looks amazing. And, you know... <laughs> And the camera functions great. There's no issues there at all. Like the camera didn't fail in any way, shape or form. But then I start to notice like there's weird spots on the photos, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe Chelsea spit on it at some point. So <laughs> I take off the lens, right? I look in the mirror, uh, it's an SLR and the mirror's got dirt on it. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. That's obviously not gonna affect my images, but that's strange. But maybe some dirt got in or something, I don't know. 
take a look at the sensor, just mud all over it, just dirty, dried, you know, silt all over it. I'm like, yeah, that's a problem. Pull the battery out. The Whole battery, battery chamber. Water comes out. Flooded with, and with like dirty water, right? So, you know, I mean, the camera functioned just fine. And and the reps, when we gave it back to them, were like, I mean, they were, you, some of them were really upset. And then others are like, this is what Nikon service is for. Don't worry about it. You know who didn't feel that way were the people at Nikon service. They probably were giving us a hard time to yeah. this day. Yeah. Anyways, it was a great video. The camera otherwise did fantastic. Yep. And uh, how long before Nikon loaned you another piece of gear? Well, I don't know. What day is it today? <laughs> 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 they were good sports about it. And, you know, yeah, it was, it was, I don't know, you know, it's like, it's one of those things where you expect that the camera will be just fine and it gets destroyed or times where you expect the camera will have no problem, you know, it, it's definitely going to get wrecked and it was perfectly fine. Like when I did my motorcycle impression with the Nikon D850, you remember that of There's course. There's a theme here. Right? My fault. I, I, I thought for sure, I mean, I physically wrecked my body on that. I, I brushed it off because, of course, I think you were recording and other people were recording, but it hurt yep. really bad. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I thought the camera's going to be toast, but it was perfect. And everyone there on the trip was like, oh, not <laughs> you did. <laughs> and the camera was fine. camera was great. It was dirty, but it was no problem. I you know that's interesting because I feel like you never know what's going to break your camera. We've dropped cameras and nothing happens. And other times it kind of just lightly hits and you think it will be fine. And then the mount is bent or, you know, something breaks. Well, using that as a segue, I went out wildlife photography one day. Oh, no. I had just received that 5D Mark III that would later die in the rain. It was brand new. I was so excited. Not a loaner. Like, I paid for it out of pocket. I put on my Canon 500 F4, very big, heavy lens, and go out into a marsh and... Mm, it's marshy. My my shoe gets stuck because I'm wearing I'm wearing I'm wearing flip flops to do this. Oh, flip flops. Yeah, yeah flip flops in a swamp. Classic mistake. Yeah, and I go forward and the whole thing falls out of my hand, smashes into the road, and the, it breaks the mount of the camera completely off. <laughs> completely bends the frame, and it's it, it did get repaired, but it was very expensive. It was almost replacement cost. Oof. On the topic of you never know what's going to give you those issues, probably the most expensive thing I've ever done is back when we shot on an FS700 cinema camera. Uh, I was just changing the ND filters on it. Uh, we were in the middle of a shoot. Suddenly it stops working, so we ship it in for a repair. And they're like, oh, you were changing the ND filters far too aggressively on this camera. Oh, yeah. It jammed up. They had to change the entire front mount of the camera. I think it was like a $5,000 repair bill. Can you uh, show it me? It was not you covered were... by warranty what was for your... moving through the ND settings too quickly. Were you like... It was like... It was like a built-in. There was a switch on the side of it, and you were supposed to go like click, stop, click, stop, click, stop. And I was like, oh, I need all the ND. I went click, 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 click. Yeah. Like, not like Danking on it, but I know. don't know. During, yeah, you yeah. I mean, it, it, sometimes I'm in a mood when we're filming. <laughs> you know, that happens. I mean, filming can but it be was, emotional. I feel like they should have taken that into account when they. Designed. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. like in the yeah, in the heat of the moment, you know, you're trying to get the shot. Who's just going to casually flick this dial, right? When you're so, a yeah. passionate you know, filmmaker, that's what you do. So it's Jordan spun it like a cowboy with a revolver, right? In a Wild West movie. Like, but yeah, that one that was a strange one because it really didn't seem like it would break. I'm like, this it seems a little sticky. Yeah. This can't be like more than a couple hundred dollars. And it's like, no, we have to fix everything. It was like it was like a whole bunch of NDs on like a disc that rotated, right? And it's interesting. It we jammed like seen midway that between particular design sense from Sony. Yeah. So. It jammed mid way, midway between two NDs, so you couldn't even shoot. It was just like a triangle through the middle of your frame. But, but did they call you, did they really say you did it too aggressively? Yes. It was yeah. all, put, it was put It was like in the, in the repair thing, like not covered under warranty because oh. this needs to, this cannot be changed aggressively. Seek anger management, <laughs> not, yeah. not the gears Jordan's fault. troubled. <laughs> <laughs> they send you back some anger management book too. Yeah, yeah, not to be used by angry people. It's in the manual now. I couldn't afford the therapy because the repair <laughs> costs so much money. What does a repair like that cost? Do you remember? 
Yeah, it was about four to five thousand, I think, somewhere yeah. in there, because it was the whole sensor and everything. I'm sure you have to disassemble the they, entire. Thing. I think they just lopped off the front of the camera, put in a whole new front to it. So, I don't know. Yeah. Can you imagine that much money? Just because you went like that a little too hard, or they were trying to teach us a lesson. I don't. Yeah. It wasn't learned, anyways, and we've done lots of stuff since then. But yeah. I was gonna say I feel bad for the viewers because you know they baby every lens they get, and we're like, we once punted a camera off of a mountain, <laughs> and surprisingly. <laughs> So far, it's only Chris who's done stuff deliberately. Yeah, I, you know, I will admit right here, I'm going to be a big person here. I'm going to admit I have been throughout my career incredibly cavalier with other people's gear. Um, I remember I used to have this thing where I would like flip lenses in my hands. You know, a lot of the early camera stores, I would just like flip expensive lenses up in the air and grab them most of the time. And uh, yeah, I've since stopped doing that. Hey. It's amazing we still have a like somewhat friendly relationship with the camera store. Although how much of this they actually knew about, you know, again, once this video comes out, I'm we'll see how much of an impact now. this has. Yeah, hopefully we never have to work for them. I, they're going to, um, we're in trouble. Yeah, I, oh, this wasn't a break, but I remember specifically we took out, it was, it was the Hasselblad, it was their compact camera, the X, uh, what oh, was that X1D? one? I think it was the X1D. Yeah, I think so. And we went out to the mountains and I'm like, well, this is a very prestigious camera. We were doing the Banff Mountain Film Festival at the same time. Right. Um, and so I'm like, well, I'm going to take a nice tripod because, you know, you're not going to stick this on a three-legged thing with a bad leg lock, right? Or a I monopod. Mean, yeah, be... No, ter or a monopod with a quarter-inch bush and that only costs a dollar. So I took like a really high-end Gitzo. It was a three-series Gitzo. Three-series yeah. Gitzo. a really nice head, too. I really remember. nice, you know, Arcus. I think it was like a Acrotech head, you know, $800 Canadian alone. Um, and we went and did some nice time, like long exposures at Marble Canyon, and the tripod disappeared. I don't know. I must have left it in the woods or left it by the car. I we can, went back. We couldn't find anything. In my mind, I see exactly how this goes, and it's like... Chris, if you just get one more shot of this waterfall, we should be wrapped. And then he goes, click, and then he just walks away. <laughs> I don't... You know, at the start of a shoot, you you know this, at the start of a shoot, you're like energized, like, oh, we got our ideas. By the end, you're kind of like, okay, let's... We got to go home. Like, I'm done. And I just... Yeah, we don't, don't really need it, that B-roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it vanished. It vanished, and it the was expensive. Thing? Yo, yeah, I have no idea where it went. Like, I, we drove back, like, an hour later. I'm like, where's the tripod? gone right look through all the spots walk the whole route again so somebody out there has a really nice tripod and you know who you are and it's okay because it was my fault we will find you i do <laughs> i do want to point out this is the single thing that is referred to most when you go back to the camera store yeah it's just like hey what's going on tripod yeah every, everything else everything else we've destroyed or damaged uh yeah the boss is always like yeah so uh, you find that tripod yet <laughs> Yeah, you want to uh, you want to pay for that tripod anytime soon? What was that soon? tripod like a thousand dollars? Oh, I'm sure the combo together was pushing two grand. Yeah, you know. But we get wholesale pricing, right? Because it's a retail outfit, so that shaves off, you know, three hundred, ten, ten, fifteen percent. You know, uh, there's no margin in camera gear. So yeah, that was a bad one. That was a bad one. That is a bad one. But you know, someone you know how psyched they were when they saw a Gitzo just laying there. They're like, yes. They got a really nice it was, piece. I guarantee you it was someone who wouldn't appreciate that at all. Like yeah. some, someone left this uh, carbon thing Oh, here. it probably went to a pawn yeah. shop for 150 bucks. Yeah. is my it guess. It into a lamp or something. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this beautiful formation that grew out of the ground oh. by the waterfall. <laughs> Dang. Who owe them? I'm definitely sending this to the camera store. I have to Please watch don't. you sever one relationship. Nothing bad ever happens to you two. You drench cameras. You chuck them off of mountains they're just so likable they're so like not the case with us we've been we've been very lucky we've been very lucky we really haven't like yeah we're making it sound like we covered up a whole bunch of stuff but really i mean we always said like oh yeah it broke we lost it whatever and they, yeah, they were always good and for the most part we've gotten away pretty well that gfx was rough yeah i don't know what else have we broken uh do you want to do the drone thing i feel like we should do the drone thing. yeah let's talk about drones you must have destroyed 40 or 50 drones. I can think of two real destructions. Um, well, first, a drone kind of messed up our kitchen cabinets. I'm not even sure you know about this, but there oh. was... There You're was, not supposed to fly them indoors, hey? The first DJI drone supported that supported gestures, I remember in their ads, you could wave to it and a it spark? would like... A spark, right. 
and it would like back up and do like a cool video shot. So I turned it on, I was just testing it, and I did not wave to it, but I think it thought I waved to it <laughs> because it decided to take <laughs> off and just like back up and it didn't, it couldn't see behind it, but it could fly back. <laughs> so it just flew right into the cabinets, put a big dent in it and then spun itself out. <laughs> But Another drone. That's a spark, though. Those are a piece of shit. I'm getting a evening <laughs> shot. <laughs> right. We don't care about that. With my $1,200 Phantom 4 Pro. Yeah. Over the, the Thames River here in New London. And then just plop. It just, like, stops, goes right into the river, never to be heard from again. Nothing I can do about it. It's just gone. I don't know what went wrong. It just, like, went for a swim. I had a weird premonition. And which one was that? The Phantom 4 Pro. Oh, the Phantom 4 Pro. Because we had a Phantom 2, our first shoot with one. We yeah. had the exact same thing. It loses signal completely. And they're great because it'll just slowly land itself. But the trouble is it was doing it. We were getting footage of Chris fishing out there. So he's in hip waders and it decides it's going to slowly lower itself into the middle of the river. Yeah. So Chris is trying to book it through this river to, get underneath, it, to get underneath it in time. And I would say you were about five seconds too late. Uh, yeah, oh, I was no. like, a f I, I, yeah, I grabbed it right as the motors are like, they're still spinning the underwater water. and you're trying to grab it and you don't want to get propellered oh, by man. it. I, I don't yeah. know why you I know, imagine that last scene in Terminator when he lowers himself into <laughs> like the molten metal. <laughs> That yeah, but there was no thumbs really up. The Phantom, you know. yeah, the Phantom was like thumbs down. No, it was like, it was as if, you know, somebody who really cared about him reached into the molten metal to save him and they got their hands burnt. Like, that's basically what it was like. It, you know, and the crazy, I mean, that's back when drones would just like, fail they would right they would, yeah. they would they would it just yeah i just hear we had a guy piling he's like oh we lost wi-fi signal or something it's it's going it's going and it was traumatic but the amazing thing was not 10 minutes before it failed we were setting up for this really cool shot on the river and um the pilot flew it out across the river went up 12 feet to get a shot came straight back down and back to us and when that, when he flew the drone out and then straight up, it actually went between two power lines that we didn't notice, oh. threaded the eye of the needle perfectly, <laughs> came right back down through the two power lines. I don't know how he didn't hit it. Only to then lose Wi-Fi connection and fall in the river, but, yeah. But it's crazy because the feed was so bad back then, we had no idea until we pulled the memory card out back in those yeah. days and then watch it and it's like, oh, oh you went good right, God. You went right between two power lines. Yeah, so, I mean, it should have died four or five times, but yep. that one was toast. So to complete that, because we couldn't finish the Phantom 2 review on that shoot because we sunk it, I went out with my good friend Levi and we were shooting by the edge of a cliff and I didn't understand how weather worked at this point. So it's a big cliff with, it's all like some of the most expensive houses in Calgary where we live. And uh, so we're down at the bottom of it and we're having a great time getting all the shots we need. So then it's like, what if we just rise up really suddenly here? But uh, if it's a windy day and you're against the side of a cliff, there's no wind there until you go up and then uh, this is a phantom too they didn't have any oh, yeah. good like processing or anything so it just immediately whips itself 180 degrees and we just hear a smash uh we lose our video feed we have no idea so we're thinking everything around here is you know ex in multi-million dollar houses exclusively in this area and we can't see it on the cliff so it clearly hit one of them it actually hit the fence of one of those houses Whoa. and then bounced all the way back down the hill um <laughs> So again, we thought that could have been, you know, a huge loss. That was a bad. That was a bad shoot overall. That Phantom Two video, I think that got like fifty thousand views. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of yeah, emotional and uh, financial. Again, the camera ruin. store has been really supportive of our show over the years. Like tremendously supportive. We're, we really appreciate uh, how much support can we just, financially. Can we just say this video is sponsored? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just, yeah, we'll make it sponsored by them. They've lost a lot. I imagine you coming oh, back and being man. like, first of all, I'd like to preface this story by saying I do not know how weather works, but I would still like <laughs> to keep my job. <laughs> I was not trained in that department. <laughs> I'm not a meteorologist. <laughs> no one taught me that. Tony got that new FPV drone, and he told me he was learning how to make it flip. And so, of course, my, like my timer starts. I'm like, I give this two hours before critical damage occurs. So he's like pretty proud. He's like, it's going well. I did a flip, honey, at 60 miles per hour. So, you know, you're just like, 
this is not going to be happy for much longer. <laughs> so sure enough, he comes back in and he was doing flips over our neighborhood and just launched it into somebody's yard. What? Well, it was stuck in a tree, like 60 feet up. Yeah. And I could not find it because the battery had fallen out. So it didn't have a signal or anything. And so I was just trespassing through all my neighbor's yards, like trying to be sneaky. Cause I don't want to admit like I was flying a drone, like an eight year old is doing flips over the neighborhood. I'm, cause I'm like a, an adult, you know, I'm like a respected professional. <laughs> no, they're probably just like, Oh, it's Tony again, flying yeah. drones over our property. Don't. <laughs> He's probably just looking for his drone boys out. He's yeah. just looking yeah. for his $3,000 ball that he kicked over the fence. Exactly. So like a week later, Chelsea decides we're going to find this drone. Like it's out there. I'm not just letting it sit out there. I'm like, I can do this. I can handle this assignment. They're like $1,500. Yeah. <laughs> it's really expensive. <laughs> and at some point it had worked its way out of the tree and fallen to the ground in our neighbor's yard. And so we found it. But it spent a week in the elements, like two serious rainstorms, and it powered up wow. just fine. It was amazing. Yeah. I have crashed so many drones and destroyed only that one drone. <laughs> but I've crashed a dozen times more. Like, how many times have we smashed oh, wow. drones into walls and rocks and... We? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I get that, I get it, we'll see me. As a team, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah everything is a we, yeah. Yeah, no, So we're we've a we. done. We've done one video on drones um, over the course of our professional <laughs> careers. Yeah, we were, that was traumatizing. And destroyed two. Uh, and you have done probably about 50 at this point, I'm guessing, and have the same number of complete destruction. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, we yeah. destroyed two. Oh, he only destroyed one. Okay, yeah, never yeah. mind. You yeah. guys are winning. Oh, Good man. Yeah, and when I say we, I don't mean we. Jordan well, did it. It was so Completely, we. yeah, it wasn't me. I was, I never... Funny. You're I haven't just... crashed a drone yet. I've flown a few. I've never crashed one. If the new could... ones are, are great. If you I... could run faster in waders, our average. Would You're be right. Fun. Yeah, that was kind You're of right. your fault. Yeah. Yeah, waist level in water. I, I'm like, I'm like an Olympic runner, man. I was. It was. Yeah. It was. It was. It was horrible. It was like watching something in slow mo because I was. I was running like the speed of slow mo. Yeah. Up a up a river buried in water. Yeah. That's traumatic. Yeah. Like that would give you. I almost got it. Nightmares. No. No, I was fine. I, no. Oh, no, it was camera no. stores. I, I was fine. You have no emotional attachment. He does not care at all. You've ruined them with almost all of the elements. What elements do you have left? You have water, fire. Lava. Oh, no, we did we did the sparks. That yeah, fire we've done. Molten metal, I guess, is lava. Um, yeah, we haven't had anything. No lightning strikes. That's true. Oh, yeah, you need... Uh, well, Earth. Earth. How, what are we going to do? Jordan's had a lot of issues with gravity, so I think that counts. I think gravity is a problem. I think we haven't frozen anything. That's true. Yeah, no, no. I did we've, freeze we've a couple of cameras, smuggled. but it didn't break them. You froze No, it camera? never does. Because yeah, we've Olympus been out in like minus 40 whatever. Yeah. I've literally frozen. They're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, wife brought an EM1 next to uh, the Yukon. It was like minus 45. That thing. Yeah. Oh, came. yeah, it did yeah. good. Yep. Does, does, um, here's a, here's a philosophical question. We're talking about the elements. We're talking about nature and weather. So does, um, a truck driving over something, does that count as an element? Is that a, is that a, is that an act of is God, the, so I to speak? I believe there's a vehicle called an element. Is that like a there, Honda yeah, element or something right? like that? Yeah. yeah. A Honda, Honda element. element, yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. the element was going to be like machismo or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so what's the I, truck story? Yeah, what happened? Well, the, so the truck story is a lesson. So I'll say the lesson first. The lesson is when you're packing up camera gear, the top of a, of the truck tire in the wheel well is a bad place to put your camera gear. It's not gear. a shelf. I mean, but it's but it's shelf height and it looks protected and yeah, it's a bad idea. Yeah, but you're still kind of defending the idea. <laughs> so I left an EM1 Mark III Olympus camera with a Leica 12 to 60 lens on it, and I left it there. I don't know what was going on. Drive away like half hour later. I'm like, where's my camera? Drive back. I find it buried in soft mud. And of course, the first thought is, I'm Chris Nichols. I get away with this. It's going to be fine. It's just <laughs> dirty. Pull it out. No, the lens like snapped off completely, totally destroyed. In his defense, the Olympus EM1 Mark III took it like a champ. It's here. Works great to this day. Obviously, no 12 to 60 on there because that didn't survive. But the front's like a little crushed, but the lens mount is flush. Works beautifully. So, you know, 50%. Got away with it. I got away with it. I think that's close to scot-free, I would say. Like, 
like just a little bit below totally getting away with it. Yeah. But in hindsight, don't don't put stuff on the back of your truck tire. It's a really bad idea. So certainly if you do, don't drive over it. Yeah. I was thinking about it, but it, but you make some good points. I <laughs> I actually think like Chris go wins. for it, like, but don't forget it. That I don't I don't want to sure. both sides this, but I can see pros and cons for either technique. Yeah. You don't want to be a flip flopper, but like I could see how it could be good. Because if I left it on the tailgate or something, or you know, on the top of the bed, I would drive away. The thing would fall off. It would be destroyed, right? It so, would probably be better than. So under clearly, the, the top of the back tire is really not that big a deal. This is called cognitive dissonance. It's a little <laughs> psychology study that we're doing here. Wait. So have you had any rules that have come out of all of the gear? that has been ruined? Like, do you have any safety? We have one. Like we learn from our mistakes? Yeah, like we learn. Like our dog. <laughs> Clearly cannot, we don't. Our dog cannot be around when we're filming on a tripod <laughs> because true. once she got the zoomies and zoomed mm. over all the tripods and broke the cameras. That, oh, wow. That does remind me. I t dogs, I totally forgot about this, but I was taking some family portraits for my sister-in-law and she has like a giant black yes. lab, huge dog. Giant and, tail. Yeah, and they're, uh, I think it was maternity or newborn photo, but they're like, let's get one with the dog. So they're like, get in here. And I had a Aperture 300, which has a ballast. So that's what stores the power on it. The dog just comes in and takes this thing out. Oh, yeah. And completely bricks the entire light. Like couldn't, right. couldn't even replace the head or anything like that so yeah that was a pricey one that was yeah so the lessons are no back truck tires no pets um molten metal bad idea generally speaking learn how meteorology works yeah the weather um right. yeah cameras are waterproof most of the time but they're never spit proof true <laughs> they're rarely uh, spit proof <laughs> is there any brand that has escaped our wrath i'm trying to think we oh yeah we broke the canon lens yeah nikon we've been bad to nikon olympus now have we broken a panasonic because we use a lot of panasonic you broke a panasonic lens oh yes i did the 12 to 60 is destroyed Ooh, we're running out um a leica we've never broken a leica we've never broke i mean the 12 to 60 has leica on it that's true yeah that leica lens i mean it's fake leica but oh but it says leica he, he it's leica leica <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we destroyed a mamiya we had a RB67, like, it survived from the 60s, and then our <laughs> drunk friend was playing pool over here in our basement and knocked it right off the pedestal. <laughs> and just, they, they don't hold up. They're big and heavy, but they are not durable. That thing just collapsed. So even <laughs> defunct camera brands can't escape oh, from yeah. the wrath. No, I guess there's nothing we haven't broken. No. No. I have to say, okay, if we were going to actually assign a winner to this, I think you would win based on the creativity. You've used almost all of the elements. You've thought of things I've never right. thought of, like a tire shelf, brilliant. The truck tire thing won it for me. Yeah, yeah. he gets my vote. And, and like using the mud to absorb a lot of the shock, you know, that's drama. Yeah, oh yeah. No, no, it was intentional. Yep, it's all <laughs> deliberate. Well, hopefully the people watching will learn from our lessons. We're Although, have, we're gonna, no one's going to watch us anymore. Why, why would I take camera advice from a guy who puts his camera on the wheel while in a truck? Dude, you know, I was tired. It was, it was a long day. It also becomes yeah. like you stop thinking about the value of gear when you are just constantly being handed new cameras. I don't think about it anymore. Do you? I, I mean, we, we think about it and we worry about it. But I mean, yeah, I guess you just get so used to like... I mean, the fact is we're out using different gear all the time, right? Like every week, week after week, like something's bound to happen. And uh, yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, well, it's the same as if you talk to any professional photographer, like if, yeah, if you're using it uh, every day, stuff goes wrong with it, where, you know, if you're taking it out once a week as a hobby or whatever, yep. you're going to babysit it more because it's not all you're not always holding a camera. Every yeah. Day. yeah, but it's attitude, too. I'm, I'm not trying to make excuses for us. I mean, there there are no excuses for no. some of the stories we've told. Yeah, but that's what I mean, too. At some point, you stop. Th I don't. When I first get a camera, I baby it. But then I'm just thinking about getting the shot. So if I put my camera down or something, you know, you get a little more reckless. That's what happens. I just think the bottom line is we're all disgusting and we've broken too many cameras. <laughs> <laughs> It is terrible, yeah. No, we, we we do, I mean, obviously we feel bad every time it happens. It's pretty rough and 
And uh, yeah, when it's your gear, I mean, I think everybody can relate to that, right? So yeah, it's 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 a crazy one. Cost of doing business. <laughs> Cost of doing business. And also, yeah. let that be a lesson: no one will ever loan us gear. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. We should never. Except for the camera. Yeah, this story. is a bad idea. Why did we do this? This is a bad idea. <laughs> I don't be like this would be a great idea to catch up with Tony and Chelsea and ruin our career. <laughs> Leica will still stand us up. Leica will be like, you guys are stuck yeah. in our books. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. No micro four third stuff. I can't hurt anything still cool. I haven't already ruined. It's all been, I've done all the damage. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, let's think about the cost to our bodies. Like, you know, I really hurt myself on that bike ramp. I'm never going to do that again. Uh, I'm going to use a dirt bike next time because that's infinitely safer. I don't, I'm so sorry that I convinced you to be a motorcycle. I don't know why I would do that to you. The truth is out. That's okay. It was, it was hilarious at the time. You know what? We got a great picture out of it. Yeah, it was really good. I was covered in dust. It was great. That's the one time I've been editing a video that I've gone back and played the moment where you hear the wind escape from your lungs. Oh, I yeah. probably <laughs> played that back for myself about 20 times. That, that knocked the wind out to be just, pretty good. Just that whoop. You can tell <laughs> something's going on there internally. Yeah, the next discussion should be how we've hurt ourselves physically in the pursuit of our careers. Oh, was that your biggest one? Uh, stepping on the rebar recently was pretty bad. Yeah, that was, that, was, was, that pretty was a pretty bad one. Wait, what happened to your foot? I've been meaning to ask you that. Uh, flip flops and, and metal rebar. Bad idea. Bad, bad idea. Like yeah. Construction rebar sticking out of the ground and uh, yeah, Chris uh, stepped on it and it was pretty bad. I feel like I've tripped on that rebar before. Like it's been there in the city park for quite a long time, I feel. But uh, yeah, just just caught it in an unlucky way. And, and since then I told the city and they've, I believe they've removed it. So nobody else will suffer from that. So you're but, a hero. Uh, I'm a hero, no, not really. No, you are, don't be no. humble now. This if you were American, you'd be a multimillionaire now because you could just- I know, government. right? <laughs> it's no. funny, every American person we know, the second that came out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're like, Susu, 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 Susu. No, no, in Canada, we just, I apologized to the rebar for getting blood on it. And then I, I called the city as a, as a you know, civil service. And um, yeah, it was, you know, it was great. That's, yeah. and everybody's fine. I'm and fine, your was probably you know. free. Universal health care, the, the doctors were great. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't cost me anything. So, you know, no harm, no foul, right? And really, it was flip flops because I feel like that's a really good lesson. Like, you can't wear flip flops. Yeah, we they're just stopped, dangerous. but I'm definitely going to still I'm wear flip flops. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, Jordan said multiple times, like, oh, you got flip flops. It's, it's a heat wave. It was hot. It's, for me, it's mostly about not having to bend down because who really wants to, like, bend? You know, normal shoes, you got to bend down. Who's got time? We don't. We're, we're busy people. We're YouTubers. We don't have time for that. Kick them off, right? Kick, I hate socks. You know, just, yeah. Hate them. I think your audience is going to get a lot out of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do as, do as we say, not as we do. We've done worse. I don't even think we have to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't have to make it ending because nobody's going to make it this if far. If you've made it this far, <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. You've learned I would some like to life hear lessons. Stories of destroying their cameras because I actually love this discussion. Like, if you've screwed up a camera, like, tell us about it in the comments. Oh There's yeah, no way. No way look over here. What's amazing about this discussion is like how many different ways you can actually destroy cameras. You know, whether it be parts failing or being completely, uh, you know inconscientious about any sort of safety or, or, or well-being of the camera gear or just like happenstance, like weather, it's crazy. So many things. Dogs, drunk friends. Dogs and flip-flops. We had friends over with young kids, like a four-year-old, seven-year-old, and we're all talking in my kitchen and their kid comes out with our 70 to 200 and I maybe like oh, uh, some yeah. cannon and he just, we have this balcony that drops down to the floor below and he's just headed for it with a huge smile <laughs> on his face and i ran over i'm like oh, no 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 i see where this is going it's a great fun idea just not with my stuff <laughs> <laughs> would like to see that myself <laughs> wait till we get a loner kid <laughs> oh man <laughs> well we're never getting them again so yeah yeah it was nice catching up with you guys. What else yeah, are you working on? Yeah, it's great talking again. What are you guys working on? Uh, 
we got we're talking about computers. Yeah, we're Very talking about computers about this weekend. Uh, oh, yes. we, I got an M1 computer. Chris got a new super fancy laptop. So yeah, uh, so we're playing with those. Um, yeah, you know uh, what else are we doing? Uh, we're going to talk about our A roll kit, and we're talking about our most disappointing episodes uh, that we loved that nobody watched. So. Yeah, that'll be a good oh, one. You guys know those. Yeah. I'm I hate sure. When that happens. I'm not going to include us in the video, so can you tell me what that is? 